everyone! Welcome to our very first tutorial where we're going to create iOS and Android mobile applications with React Native. So one code base for both iOS and Android apps. And the best way to learn a new language or to refresh your memory about cross-platform applications is through following along with examples. But this is one of the basic examples that we have and it's our first tutorial, so we're going to create a food deli delivery application called Food Central. And we're going to use React Native, Language, and Expo. So here's what we'll learn in this tutorial. We're going to create custom reusable components. So if you can note this in this mock-up, there are repeating elements, repeating card elements. So we're going to create a custom component so that you won't have to copy-paste code. Next, we're going to style these components. So notice that there's there are different sizes of text, different colors. We're going to learn how to do that to style these elements. And we're going to use more complex elements like images, icons, and lists in React Native. And as a bonus, we're going to use prop types for these reusable components. So stay tuned. Now, we want to visualize our application. So from this low fidelity mockup, now that you've seen this low fidelity mockup, this is a high fidelity mockup we created to further visualize the application we're going to create. Now it's the same, almost the same, you know, it ha but it has the design, right? So here, as you can see, we have multiple cards. So these are our re custom reusable components that we will create. We'll also learn how to use the flat list in React Native. That's where we can render array of objects containing the different restaurant names, images, categories, delivery time, duration, and it has the distance of that restaurant. Here's the demo of the app we will be creating. So I'm running this on Expo on my phone. And as you can see, they're rendering a list of restaurants with the same design. And this will be our first app for today, a food delivery application called Food Central. Now let's get to it. Before we get started, let's go over the app architecture. So this is our app. I'm going to move to the next screen here and there. So our app will have multiple, uh, there's only, there's going to be one screen with multiple files and we will create three custom components called the header. So the header will contain a background color and the application name, so in our case Food Central. Then we're going to create a card and that card will contain the image, restaurant name, the category like bakery or fast food, time and distance. And then icon label. So as you can see here, there's a corresponding icon. Siri, not now. So there's a corresponding icon and a label to it. So since it's two of them, we're going to create a custom component so that we won't have to repeat code. And then the card will just be these multiple card elements. So there's a total of four JS, JS files to create in our Food Central app. When you're developing an application, it really helps if you can visualize the entire app uh, through the UI elements by creating mockups like we did earlier and through creating an architecture sh such as this. So you would know what elements, what components you would need to create and how many screens would your app have. So in our case, there's only one screen for now since it's a basic app, but at least we can identify that in that one screen, there are multiple components that we have to create or delegate if you're working with a team to make things more effective. So let's jump in and create our new project. Okay, so let's create our first React Native project. So I powered up a Visual Studio code and then opening the terminal when you create 
React Native projects with Expo. The command is Expo init food central app. So this is the name of the app or project we're trying to create. So make sure to select blank. And then this will tell Expo to install either via Yarn or NPM. So before you can actually install an app with Expo, you have to install Expo first. So you can head over to the Expo documentation so that you, you know the steps on how to install Expo on your device. So usually just um, installing node modules and then installing Expo itself. Expo X SDK. So while that's going on, I can introduce, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the files of your application. So app.js, opening that up, just minimizing this. So app.js is the entry to your application. So this is where the code to start your application is going to contain, right? So whenever, when we run this, um, our, our application screen will contain this text. Okay, so installing JavaScript dependencies. Now app.json contains details about our application. So this is the name of our application because that's how we created it. But we can always, <clears throat> excuse me, you can always remove the app or we can modify the name here in app.json. Uh, so the version, orientation, etc. Now package.json will contain, the most important part here is it contains all the dependencies installed in our application. So you can, whenever you add um, external libraries, like for example, in later tutorials, we will add uh, Redux, React Redux, or even Firebase if you want persistent storage. All those dependencies will be added here. And then once you run npm install, all these libraries will be installed in your application. Okay, just checking. Okay, it's done. Great. So before we start creating and running our first app, the Hello World, I just want to introduce the project structure that I usually do whenever I create mobile applications with React Native and Expo. So I usually put all my source code in an SRC folder here, and then all my application screens in a screens folder, and then all external components in a components folder. Okay, so so what are these other folders? So this is de the default for, uh, for React Native, so uh, an Expo. Assets will contain your images and fonts that you want to load into your application. The node modules are, well, that's what it is installed and required to run your application. And X SRC will contain all the source code, right? So screens here are is the entire screen. So whatever you see on your screen, it may have tabs, like for example, for Instagram, um, your entire screen will contain like a status bar with the logo of Instagram and then some um, tab bar below. So that's like the entire screen. All the components will be in that one screen. If you go to the messages screen, messenger, for example, the screen would contain a lot of elements like individual contacts or messages. Okay, so components will contain all the separate uh, elements of your screen. Like for example, it could be common elements like buttons, um, lists, or for in our case, the restaurant card. For screens, in our case, it'll only contain one screen called home screen. That's why we don't need to navigate from one screen to another because you only have one screen. Okay, so now that's done. I'm gonna enter the, the project called Food Central app and run expo start to run the application on my expo app here on my phone. So <clears throat> it's going to take a bit of a couple of, sec couple of seconds, hopefully. 
Notice that the node modules are <coughs> excuse me, appearing here now. So if you want to open DevTools, you can um, perform Shift D or D to open it now, but I'm not going to open it just yet because we're not logging anything. We're just creating something very basic. I'm going to teach you to how to use it. So I'm going to refresh my app, my Expo app, and there's our projects. 6%, 7%. Takes a bit of time sometimes. So again, this is dependent on your internet connection. How fast this is. So apparently, at this time, my internet connection is not doing well. Hmm, it's speeding up. So it's kind of unstable. So let's just wait until this uh, reaches 100%. Okay, now our app is up running and this is what's appearing on Expo app. So if we change this text to hello world, oops, hello world, save. Since fast refresh is enabled, on save we can see our changes reflecting on our app. Now, one thing I'd like to add before we start diving into the code is to add some settings that will help us code more effectively and efficiently. So under the root folder here, create a folder called .vs code. So these settings apply to VS code only. Um, create a file called settings.json and paste this code. Save. I'm going to zoom in here. so. It it's clearer to everyone. So quickly, uh, there are four elements in this settings. First is format on save. So if you have code that's misaligned or it's out of, out of place, once you save that uh, file, it's going to immediately format itself so it's more consistent and cleaner to look at. Next is if you reach 120 columns, it's going to wrap your code so it make, makes it things more uh, neater. And it's going to convert all the double codes in your code to single codes. Single codes, rather. So let's give that a um, sample. There's alignment there. Okay, that, that's an error. And save. And it formats everything perfectly. Okay, so now let's dive into the code in the next video.